What's cracking Jump Nation family? It's your boy here, Rushi Yes, aka the Jump Rope Coach. Welcome back to the home of Jump Rope Fitness and Lifestyle people. Today we have another fire jump rope tutorial for you. Today we're talking side swing crosses. Now, I get tons of messages, videos, clips, everything sent to me by so many of you guys around the world. And today we have a video that we're featuring from a guy called Sander. He's from the Netherlands, aka Holland. I'm gonna get his video up right here okay now now sander is having a few issues with his side swing crosses all right and he sent me this message really nice message it says hi rushi as you can see i'm practicing side swing crossovers with some double unders i'm jumping rope with cross rope speed rope here no comment <laughs> however yours look quite professional so when i do my side swings uh my feet and knees look like they wobble around and then uh yeah there's a lot of cool other things around the message but today i want to touch on sander's techniques okay and i want to try and fix it and then hopefully at home, you guys watching as well can get some good value out of it. Uh, and I'm also gonna add in a couple of more variations so that you guys can really spice up your workouts. Remember guys, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and join us. We're the hottest fitness community growing across the world today. And we are backed up by the number one speed ropes, jump ropes on the internet. Click the links down below, www.rushathletics.co.uk and use Rush10 for 10% discount, man. You're gonna get a ton of super cool stuff to get you guys started with your jump rope journey, okay? Also available on local Amazon. So I'm not gonna waste too much time, guys. This is quite uh, an easy fix for Sander. And then again, I'm gonna add some more variations so you guys can see how this move is done correctly, okay? Now, with his video, and I'm gonna keep it playing kind of in the background here as I talk, uh, he's pretty good from both sides, right? Now, I kind of like the way he's got this hopping motion going, which is really nice. This is kind of one of the RA kind of techniques that we, we love to use as well. Um, but what tends to happen is he tends to sort of break down on his left side. Now, this is very common, okay? I've trained so many people around um, over the years and what they tend to do is they always have a stronger side. Me as well, I always have a stronger side as well. Uh, in his instance, his left side seems to be the weaker side. So what's happening here is the loops and the symmetry of the arms are not correct. So what you need to feel here, especially Sandra as well, is we need to get symmetry in how the arms move. Now, what happens from his right-hand side, which is really good, is he creates a really nice loop. And the reason is this, is because when his left hand goes beside his body, it does this small little rotation, which keeps the momentum going, but then his right arm has this fold, which means it comes up and across his torso, which creates the loop that he needs to then jump through. Whereas on the left-hand side, what's happening is it gets a little bit swipey. It kind of comes low, and around his body like this, whereas his right hand was coming up and over. So if you get that kind of feeling, and you can exaggerate this move, up and over for the arm is what creates a really big loop. Now this is exaggerated, so we don't want it to look like this when you get better, but this is me just showing you up and around, up and around. If you go swipey with it, it will naturally sometimes, anyway, trip or create a little kink in the rope or it'll just narrow the rope where that it just kind of doesn't allow your body to pass through. As you get better and as you get some speed, you can have an action that looks a little bit swipey, but even when I'm doing it at speed, I'm still up and, up and around, right? If that makes sense. Another key aspect of this is that you need to feel um, a really light grip pressure, like towards the end of the, the handles. Now he's using cross ropes here, and I'm not one to try and cuss any brands out. It's nothing to do with that. The, the issue is though, however, is that cross ropes use a mechanized rope. Now you can still do this move with mechanized ropes. However, with a rope like mine that I'm using today, so this is the Money Rope Performance, the speed rope is obviously coming through the handle, which means I can have full manipulation of how this rope moves simply because it's connected fully to my wrists, all right? So when you've got a mechanized rope, it's spinning on its own axes. So the rope is moving in a kind of a different direction to where your wrists are, all right? And that's just the nature of those ropes. Um, they're not really meant in my opinion, to be used in this kind of freestyle fashion. So you can still get it done. However, what you just need to focus on now is your wrist positioning. So when you're coming from, let's say, your left side, right? You've got this up and around motion with your top hand, your left hand. Your bottom hand needs to still spin this rope. And if you can get that bit done, so the bottom hand spins at the same time as the arm comes over, we then can make sure that the loop still stays in intact. And you can see from his video, sometimes the loop is a little bit jagged, um, which again, sometimes you can jump through it, sometimes you're just gonna trip. So you want these loops to be as sharp as possible. And so the way to do that is both hands need to sort of rotate at the same time. 
So what I'm trying to feel here is that bottom hand has a little spin action and the top hand has a spin action at the same time. So he also goes on to mention about his sort of knees and legs feel a little bit wobbly right now. This just comes down to a lot of time and practice, but you need to feel a lot more balance in your feet and the pressure that you're applying to the floor, okay? What's happening is when people are trying to do these kinds of moves, they're almost forgetting about the feet. They're just sort of making sure obviously the arms are in the right position, but then the footwork, uh, they don't really practice it, right? So what you're trying to learn here now is when we're trying to do these jumps, guys, is we want, first of all, the jumps to be at the same time. So the timing of the, the each jump, so like even when I'm sort of jumping with a boxer step here, if I'm doing this move, I want my feet to feel like they're just jumping at the same speed. I don't want them to stop and then jump. Uh, it then obviously looks a little bit awkward and gets a little bit more difficult. So your focus now is to feel like the legs and the feet, they move at the same rate, just like this, and your hands are gonna move around your feet as such. So that way, when we're doing this move now, it will start to look a lot more smoother because you're just not breaking a step or missing the beat, if that makes sense. And if you are finding like you're tripping, um, but your footwork is still the same pattern, then you just know that we need to fix the wrist conditions and make sure that you can get this loop to feel, feel like it comes around just as you're jumping. And that's a good way just to really focus on your footwork, peeps. It's not easy to explain how to get it done correctly, but the main thing is don't try and put too much focus on your hands and speed of the, rat, the, the wrists, etc. Because if your feet can't keep up or if they're too slow or if they're not stable, then the whole thing will just break down. So at the beginning of the video, I told you to sort of exaggerate this movement up and around. So we're here now, we're doing up and around. So again, it's not the most classic looking style that I would use, but it's a good way to just start to learn the loops and trying to get the timing right with your feet. But then as you get better, you can start to tighten up where your wrists go. So previously where I was trying to exaggerate the movement out here, you can start to pull it in a bit tighter, do that up and around a little bit more tighter. And you can really just try to, I guess, experiment on how close you can start to keep your wrists maintaining a good loop and jumping through it. If you find that you're tripping up, then just go back to the exaggeration technique where it sort of feels a little bit more slower, a bit more exaggerated. Then as you get better, then we can tighten it up, keep it close to the body, just like I'm doing now, all right? So that's really key. The last point is where we really feeling the pressure in our hands on this grip. Now, something like the cross rope, a little bit more heavy, a little bit more clunkier handles. Um, again, if you're trying to do this move, you can do it with something like the Nova rope, which I'm gonna share with you now. If you've got something that's more of a bigger handle, it can still be done, but you still need to have the same sort of elements with your hands and your, your grip pressure. So what I tend to do with this move always, and most moves like I always talk about in the channel, is just light grip pressure on the ends of the handle. That way it can generate enough speed and you can almost cheat a little bit by not having to stretch your arms around your body too much because if you've already got it on the ends of the handle you can then keep the hands a little bit tighter into the body and then the move can look a little bit more slicker but then we also got this slingshot action because we're not gripping too tight there's not a lot of tension because if you have too much tension and again if you've got something like a mechanized rope where the rope is not cooperating as much where your wrists go, then it will start to lead to those swipey methods, which will always lead to a trip. A swipey method is not gonna cut it. You need to make sure that you're making your wrists nice and nimble, nice and loose. That way, this kind of extension of your arm flows into the rope and we can create some really nice loops. All right, gonna try and wrap it up with a couple of cool variations that you guys can try. So, with that little mini hop just like this, that's a nice variation like you've seen uh, Sander do. You can even go a more of a higher, exaggerated high knee, which is nice. High knee on both sides, that's nice. You can go running just like this, trying to keep the feet and the legs moving at the same speed so it looks nice and smooth. Uh, loads of different variations. You can even go toe kick out, that's a nice one. Little toe kick out here. Um, listen, you've got so many different options, variations with this move. Hopefully, technically, it makes sense what we talked about. And Sander, if you're watching this, thank you so much for sending the video in. Check the website right now, grab our ropes, grab our apparel, workout mats. 
a lot of cool sales on at the moment. Grab yourself a cool discount and bargain or treat your loved one. If you guys have any other recommendations or any other issues with your rope game, drop me a comment and I'll try and get the video done for you. Otherwise, until next time, I'll see you. So take care of yourself, skip the treadmill, stay safe. Peace. Was the knight in shining armor in your movie? Put your lips on mine and love the aftertaste now